Okay, I'm going to start my Sage payroll question. So I'm going to open the software here, double click the shortcut you should have on your desktop. And you are instructed to log in using the username user1. And the password is pass. And the account name is ATI. Now I found I can log in without the password here. So just click OK. And that will bring us in to the software. And one of the first things you have to do then is to restore the data set. So here we have to browse using the three little dots here. We browse to the location of the data set. So once I expand the folders to the location of my data set, then I click on the payroll folder and click OK and I'll click restore. And it tells me it's successful. I click OK on that. And I should see then that I'm in period six. It's a monthly payroll and the date. One of the first things I'm asked to do is to update the company narrative. So I'm going to go to company payroll and company details. And on this screen here you see narrative. So just click into that field. And there we go. And you're going to be putting in your exam number. So I'm just going to put in X is there for the moment and my initials. But you'll have your exam number. You don't put your name on anything and you click OK. And that's all you have to do there. So the next piece asks me to set the pay period. So I'm going to click the first node on the map here. And that brings me into set period. And I'm just going to increase that by one. And that brings up period seven and it changes the relevant dates and it also updates the insurable weeks. So there's five insurable weeks in July 2019 and I click OK. And that builds the database for that payroll. OK, so requirement two asks me to set myself up as a new employee. So I'm going to go to edit employees here. And I click on new. And it asks me for the first name, and the first name is going to be your exam number. And insert the word student into the surname field. So student goes in there. And you commenced employment on the 1st of July. We don't have any details for address. I do have a PPS number, so 2604621R in there and I'm also given the date of birth as the 15th of the 12th 1980. Generally I find it easier to type in those dates um, in the correct format of course rather than trying to search the calendar and then I am given the monthly tax credits USC's etc so I'm just going to set those up so on my next tab, the yearly tax credits are 275 multiplied by 12, so 3,300. So I'm given the monthly figure and just make sure it comes back to that, and it does, 275. So the next piece then is the USC, so I'll just put... Tax status is week one, month one, sorry, week one, month one, there's the tax status. So I'm just ticking these off as I have them done. Um, the standard rate cutoff point for the month is given as 2941.67 and we're going to multiply that up by 12. So 35,300 there. And just to double check that it tallies back with the monthly, which it does. And then the USC cutoffs I'm going to add next. So USC details here and just add the fields. So at zero rate, um, I have 1001. And sorry, that's a monthly figure, so I need to multiply all of those up. Then 
already know these figures off by heart anyhow at this stage and cut off point two is one six one six five six point one seven multiplied by two twelve sorry one six five six point one seven multiplied by twelve so that goes to one nine eight seven four point oh four and just again just cross check your monthly cutoff and the third rate then is the five eight three seven and twelve and that is seventy thousand and forty four and okay that and you'll see them populate then on the screen here so the cutoffs are done and that's all we need for the moment on that screen okay so the next thing then is just to set a PRSI code so I'm going to set this to A1 and if you forget that it'll prompt you anyhow and the other thing it tells me in the question is that this person's on a salary and that they're paid by check so I'm just going to make sure they're set there on the third tab in that window and then I can save my changes to that employee and I'm going to close out for a moment and the time and pay I'll enter in a moment but I need to set up a new pay element so I'm going to go to company payroll and payments and this employee has vouched expenses so just set in a title there for them and it's really a variable amount and it's non-taxable so make sure you deselect tax in USC and do not apply any PRSI and there's nothing to do with pensions leave all that blank and just click on save okay so now I'm going to go into the time and pay and it told us to ignore any information about the RPN details because we're manually entering those revenue details so I'm going to click no on that and I'm going to continue into my time and pay and I'm using three little dots here I'm just going to bring up the student employee and I just want to input the salary there so the salary is given at 38,500 and obviously you divide by 12 there to get your monthly salary so I'm just going to pop in that value 3208.34 and I also want to put in the vouched uh, expenses that they need to be reimbursed for so that brings that to 60 there and that's it then I'm going to save my changes on that payroll okay so I'm going to move on to point number three the next employee so Grace Perlman has decided to contribute six percent of her salary value to pension scheme so two things with pension I want to go into payments and click on salary and just double check there that the pension tick box is selected so I need to tick that and click save and I want to close out of that and then I want to go to company payroll and deductions and just make sure there is actually a deduction set up there and there is you can use the default settings on this there's nothing new to add there so click save and close so now if I go into enter time and pay and again no I don't want to retrieve RPNs uh, you won't be able to do that in a, an exam setting and if I just bring up the employee that I'm looking for and just double check you have the right employee and I do and the pension values then I want to put in there so the employees value is six and make sure you take the percent option and done and the employer in this case is contributing three percent and again percent and done 
and this is effective from the 1st of July for its for, for the full month and I can click save on that so that's the pension done okay so I'm moving on now to the fourth point in the question and the employee's aid is Spence who was absent for two days during July as a result of illness and there's no provision for sick leave in her employment contract so you have to set up a new deduction for unpaid leave and ensure the deduction is indicated as a separate pay element on the pay slip. So to do that then I'm going to go to company payroll and deductions and we're going to click new here and we're going to call this unpaid illness and it's a deduction from gross so just be careful on that that you click on gross and it's just a standard deduction and there's no need to store a balance on this and click save so that just sets up the deduction element of it i can close that and then when i go into the time and pay again i don't want the rpn so click no and continue and I want to go to this employee, so there is Ada Spence, and again just make sure you have the correct employee, and her salary is 4375 per month, so 4375 by 12 gives 52500 so 52500 is for 260 days. So dividing by 260 gives me back 201.92 and 201.92 is the daily rate for a so 201.92 multiplied by 2 will give me 403.84 so that is the deduction that i need to make there so 403.84 is the deduction so again once i've that in our salary stays the same and i just put in the deduction there there's no other changes for ada and i click save okay so my next employee there point number five is arthur clark was made redundant on the 31st july 2019 so i need to set up a payment for redundancy and he has worked the full month which makes it a bit easier. So in the payments, if I go new and put in the title, and this is a fixed amount, and there's no tax, obviously, USE, and there's no PRSI on the redundancy payment. So I can take those out, there's no pension, and you click save. So it should be listed there and no ticks obsolete. I click close on that. So now I need to go to Arthur Clark and check there um, when he actually started with us. So if we go to Arthur Clark, the start date is here, the 1st of the 8th, 2015. So just make a note of that and cancel. So enter time and pay and no on that and continue so again here i'm going to bring up um, arthur clark and i should see redundancy there and i do so in order to calculate the amount um i must take the number of years he has with us so he started on the first of the year 2015 and he's here until the 31st july 2019 so that's actually four years uh, exactly so four years and I multiply that then by the the rate. So it tells me it's to be calculated two weeks per year of service plus bonus week subject to a maximum of 600. So I've got to get his salary here. So he's on 4,000. So 4,000 per month works out at 48,000 for the year. So 48,000 for the year divided by 52 weeks is 923 per week so 923 is higher than the maximum of 600 so therefore i take the 600 as the rate so 600 multiplied by four years 
and multiply that by 2 because he's getting 2 weeks for every year and then add on 600 more that gives me a total of 5400 so I enter that there on the redundancy field and that's it for payments and deductions and I must also come over here to the leaving suspended area and click on leaving and make sure that I have the correct leaving date entered so 31st to 7th defaults there and that's correct and that's it then I can click save okay so my next employee point number six on the question is Martha Fox has been awarded an annual car allowance of 4,800 so I'm going to close out of this screen and go to company payroll and payments and I need to set up a new pay element here for car allowance and it's a a car allowance it's a fixed amount I'm going to leave all the taxes and PRSIs fine and click save and I can close out of that and now that I go back to enter the time and pay I don't want all PN and I continue and if I bring up Martha Fox I can see that the car allowance is there so the allowance is given as 4,800 for the year and the allowance is effective from May the 1st so we have to make sure that we enter the value for the year so far so she's done May, June and July that she's get compensated for so 4,800 divided by 12 is 400 per month and we have three months to pay so that's 1,200 there into the car allowance payment and again, I can click save on that and that's done. Okay, so when you are finished entering the data from your question, just go back into your time and pay and click continue there and just make sure that you take each employee from the beginning and double check and make sure that you have saved each employee. So. Uh, this employee Steve Gates we didn't have any actual edits for him so therefore we haven't actually saved the payroll there so I'm just going to click save there was no changes so just click save and you can use the little radio buttons here to click through the others so grace we had changes there and pension so that's saved already and Ada was a change as well we've that saved and Arthur Clark again we have done the redundancy there and Martha Fox we have done the car allowance and our own entry there we've put up the salary and that was it so we have saved all our payrolls then at that point if you had missed an employee then they won't appear on the payroll so make sure you save all employees so I can close out of that screen in the final stages then of your exam question for payroll you're asked to print the gross to net report so if you click on view gross to net and just a quick tip on the setup uh, it's better if this report is on landscapes so just make sure that option is ticked there and if you want to generate a pdf uh, just click the microsoft print pdf option and okay that as a setting and when you click on your pdf button here then it should save to a particular location so you can browse the location where you want to save it and follow the instructions for saving you might want to add your exam number to that file name and click save and sorry i have that already generated but i'm just going to overwrite it do you wish to view the file yes if you view the file then it will generate as a landscape as opposed to a portrait PDF file. So you have it saved and ready to. So, likewise, when you want to view a payslip or generate a payslip, click the View Print Payslip. And if you want a particular payslip, we're looking for employee number six. So, I can just put in from to six to six. And if you take the email payslip option, it allows you to generate a PDF and you can save it and print it so in English generate the page. browse to where you want the payslip to be saved along with your other reports click OK and it will generate and unless you want to go to location OK that and you'll be able to see your file there so 
there is my paste up you can double click to open it and see it and make sure you're happy with it also asked to generate the control summary report so view summary again click the pdf option and you'll be prompted where to save it and you can do the same procedure with that and click save to save it with your other reports and if you want to view it, click yes, otherwise no, and you'll see the three files together later. And that's your reporting done. So when you're finished, all your reports and everything is done, don't forget to uh, do the end of period, and that'll post the calculations. And then you can go to backup, so miscellaneous and backup. And browse to the location using the three dots there browse to the location where you want to save the backup and you should have a folder set up with your exam number as the name of the folder and you'll be saving to a payroll folder within that and you can have that folder structure set up before you go once I have the correct folder located click backup and it will run through the backup of the database and it'll tell you it was successful click OK and that is done so just to talk to you a little bit about folder structure here, I have my exam folder here, my exam number on it. You won't have your name or anything to do with your name on it. Now I have saved all my uh, payroll to this particular folder, which is incorrectly named. So I'm going to rename that. So right click and rename and this should be payroll. And in there I know I have my payslip and my reports and I'm just going to tidy that up maybe rename that as well to reports and I have the three backup files there and again don't try and open those files and there's no need they won't open for you without being in the application and within my exam folder there I will also need an accounts folder and I'll also need a spreadsheet folder. So you can have those set up at the start of your exam and that's where your solutions, your reports and your backups will be going to.